how many of you know me by my name? Um, if, you are a <clears throat> if you are my colleague at NSU, if you're a student, you don't count. So I would like to see a show of hands. If you're if you our guest today, how many of you know me by my name? <laughs> you get the point, right? <laughs> you, you, you got it. But how many of you know Hemingway by his name? I, I would like to see a show of hands. All of you, right? All of you. Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore? All of you, right? <laughs> you, you get the irony of my you know, the presentation. Like, I'm going to talk about the difficulty of writing, or why writing is so difficult, or why we can write. If I knew that perhaps I would be a name in the meantime, you know, I'd be famous. So I don't know why perhaps writing is so difficult, and yet I study writing, I teach writing, I you know, the, um, write about writing with, with, with huge amount of ignorance about writing. But then I still can think about like, some of the ignorance that the scholars in my field of writing share. For example, think of a scenario. Like, you, you need to write something, you're in front of the computer screen, and your keyboard is dancing. You are like writing too mad and too fast. Did it ever happen to you? It didn't. I know, writing doesn't happen that way. If it at all did, you are a victim of a rare neurobiological disorder. The disorder is called hypergraphia. So you are fortunate that it has not happened to you. So what is the <coughs> right scenario? The scenario is that you need to write something, you are ready with your keyboard, and then you feel blank. You feel blocked. You, you feel frustrated. Nothing emerges. OK, why nothing emerges? The reason is that humans are not biologically primed to write. Humans are biologically primed to speak. We are by default speaker. We are not by default writer. Okay? So that's why it, 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 it's become so difficult to write. But then when I'm saying by default speaker, does speaking lead to writing? It doesn't. The reason is that writing is not speech per se. Writing is a systematic selection and organization of speech. For example, the way I'm delivering my lecture, if it is transcribed, it might not read like or feel like writing. Then where is writing coming from, everyone? Writing is coming from a process of selection, it's trial of error, that we often don't know. But the main thing, when it comes to writing, then generally, if we talk about so-called expert writer and novice writer, there are three steps and stages of writing. And the first step is, we call it pre-writing. And the step, third step is, we call, we call rewriting, okay? Pre-writing consumes about 85% of our time and energy. By pre-writing, I'm talking about we are not writing. We are thinking about writing. We are researching, we are reading, we are collecting idea, we are locating information, we are brainstorming, we are percolating. And then 14% of our time and energy is consumed by rewriting. By rewriting, I call revising. We need to revise that, we need to fix that. So only 1% of our time and energy is consumed by the physical act of writing. So when we get down to writing, we just, what we do, we tap into 1% of our time and energy. We do not do the, you know, the pre-writing thing well, okay? We are not used to do that. And also, the, we also have some kind of taboo about rewriting because we tend to consider that all so-called gifted writers, they don't rewrite, they don't revise, okay? And they get everything right on the first chance. It, it has never been the case. Okay? All so-called gifted writers are compulsive editors. Okay? They edit their writing as many times as they can do. For example, Hemingway changed the last page of one of his books, A Farewell to Arms, 39 times. And the reporter asked him, why did you have to change it 39 times? And he said that I was not getting the right words. Think of that a Nobel laureate, you know, he, he got the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954. And the Nobel laureate, he, is, he does not have the ability with words to get everything right in the first chance. But then the second thing that when, when it comes to writing, why it's so difficult, everyone, we also tend to consider that, okay, writing comes from thinking. It's true, but it's not true. Why it's not true? Because we all can think at the moment you are thinking to process my lecture, OK? Or <clears throat> to make sense of what I'm trying to say. This is what we call, let's call it cognition, OK? Uh, humans are by default cognitive creatures, 
Okay? We all can think, but for writing, just this default virtue of cognition is not enough. We need metacognition. That means we need superior level of thinking. We need, we need to have thinking about thinking. Okay? Deep thinking. We need to have deep thinking. And most people do not want to think deeply because deep thinking is difficult. Why writing is difficult? Because problem with writing is problem with thinking. Okay? And, and writing presupposes deep thinking. Most people do not want to think deeply. Second thing why sometimes writing is difficult. Like we know that we need to have language for writing, of course we do. But also we get to remember that just the default position of language, we all are linguistic creatures, we can speak, right? That's not enough to write something. For writing, we also need to have some kind of metalinguistic ability. That means we need to have superior attachment to sensibility with language. That means we must own the language. We call that metalinguistic ability. That means you need to break and bend your language the way you want when you need to write something. That means it needs to be your language. It's not the language coming from some bookish version or from dictionary. The way you use it, it needs to show, it needs to show some kind of unique attachment towards or with words. Most people don't have that because in order for that to happen, you need to read a lot, or you need to have some kind of linguistic exposure for a prolonged phase of time. And where is that exposure coming from? That exposure is coming from reading. All so-called gifted writers are voracious readers. So we must read. But then we also must remember that reading, the correlation between reading and writing is never inevitable, is never automatic. Because if reading, if you want your reading to complement your writing, you must read like a writer. Okay? Just reading for information, decoding information is not enough. You must read like a writer. What does that mean? It means something so simple. When you read something, as Steven Pinker said, like how do you become writers? We become writers by spotting, savoring, and reverse engineering example from good prose. Think of the word by spotting, savoring, and reverse engineering example from good prose. That means when we read, we, what we do, we read like writers. That means we try to understand the semantic, mechanical, rhetorical, and syntactic options and restrictions a writer is applying and avoiding to transcribe his thought. This is exactly what he did with the words, with the sentence, and what I'm going to do. That means also you need to have some kind of, you know, you, you, you got to reverse engineer. So in a way, what we should say, the great act of writing is a great act of imitation. All great writers imitate. Where do they learn writing from? They learn writing from their masters. Okay? Writing is not coming from any secret, sacred source. Writing is, is, a, is a completely humanistic endeavor. Human write. Machine cannot write. We'll come back to that, that you know, the chat GPT. So machine cannot write. What do you think about chat GPT when it comes to writing? It's a big nothing, okay? When it comes to writing, chat GPT is a big nothing. The reason is that everyone, as I, as I told you, writing is a humanistic endeavor, but then everyone, if we compromise with the, with the quantity and quality of writing, that's an existential crisis because what writing requires, writing requires three things. Writing requires deep thinking, writing requires extensive reading, and writing requires compulsive editing. Okay, these are commonly human endeavors. This is exactly how we become cognitively developed. If machine is doing thinking, then you know, kind of we block our, our path to development, cognitive development. That's perhaps not the main problem when it comes to you know, the machine and, and thinking. The main thing is that if, if you are ready to be amused or amazed by the power and potential of that, of that machine, you perhaps will see that it's producing clinically precise prose, grammatically correct. But did you ever say, when you read something, wow, excellent grammar? You did not say that, right? When you read something, did you ever say? No one did. But we often say, wow, great writing, right? Then what makes great writing great? It's a, it's, it has a fair amount of emotion. It has a fair amount of intuition. It has a fair amount of imagination. It shows some kind of semantic sophistication. It shows critical intelligence. And it shows factual diligence. All these things are not coming from machine. It's, it's, it's coming from human brain. And also, writing needs to have some kind of you know, unpredictable turn and twist when, when with words and thought and ideas and structuring and, and plot and all these things. With that kind of thing, it doesn't have that. 
But even the, let's consider that in a hypothetical situation, that at, at some point it's going to have that kind of like a human cognition or the emotion. But then we need, perhaps need to be careful because problem with writing is problem with our existence. If we fail to write or we stop writing, perhaps we stop existing. So the question is how do you overcome the difficulty of writing? One, writing has never been easy for anyone. And then writing comes from dealing with the difficulty, not overcoming with the difficulty. You know, that if you could overcome all your difficulty when it comes to writing, then you don't become writer, okay? So how do you become writers? You know that writing is difficult, and then dealing with the difficulty is, is how, you know, we end up becoming writers. And then everyone, like all other craft everyone, writing requires regular practicing. Like, we often do not practice because we all are scared of writing. If I ask you a question, like, how many of you wrote something recently? By writing, I don't mean, I don't mean transcribing, <laughs> you, know, you know, any writing, anything. I mean, it's something which is, which is meaningful, which is powerful, which is transformative, which is touching. How many of you wrote something of that, that, you, you know, most of you, we didn't. And then I can tell you that the process was enlightening, but at the same time, it was very tiring as well, right? Writing reduces us to our bare basic. And then when you write something, like if you do not feel being the stupid most person on earth, then you are not doing it right. It, it, it is, it is. Because you know that when you write something, then when it, it, what comes up, you don't want to show you, show the world because it's gibberish stuff. Your language is not there. You, your thinking of is not there. The right kind of information is there. But you know that the structure is there. The skeleton is there. Now you have to work on it in order to make it the way world would, would love to read it. This has been a, you know, the, it's, it's been a learning process. Like we have to go through some kind of learning curve in order to earn or learn that skill or craft. But then most people do not want to do that. That's why writing seems difficult. And as, as I told you earlier, everyone, humans are by default not, not writer. Humans are by default speaker. Okay, like la last thing you, you heard. Like we often say the native speaker. Did you ever say somebody was saying native writer? Uh, you, you didn't, right? Then why do you relate you know, the first language or native language with, 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 with writing? Writing has nothing to do with, with you know, the first language because writing requires a different kind of language. It requires the metropolitan version of the language, sophisticated language, poetic language, which is the one first language. It, it, it's, a, it's the outcome of learning that, 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 that language, okay? So happy learning and happy writing. Thank you very much.